Howdy everyone, how's it going? Thank you for tuning in. I have a quick little video today on the two G.I. Joes I picked up a few days ago. Um, I think my Pike video is going to be delayed just by a little bit. It'll probably be out tomorrow just because the video was actually really bad in, in like the quality. It didn't process right and, and it, it just, it, it was really not so great. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, I know I posted on Instagram that it would be out today. However, I just, or it would be out yesterday. I just, I, I couldn't, I had to re, I had to trash it. Unfortunately, that's just what happens. Um, the audio on this, I hope is not too loud. Uh, just turn it down. I'm not trying to sound like a dick. Just turn it down if I'm too loud because I've noticed that if I talk normally, it's overbearing on the mic. So, just kind of a PSA right there, just turn it down. Usually about half volume is where it sounds better. If you turn it all the way up, it's gonna be mega loud, and I apologize. But, without further ado, I've got these two guys right here. I've got the Desert uh, Patrol Snake Eyes. And if you saw my quick little snippet video, his accessories were severely warped. And I've had them in the sheet for a few days, so we're gonna kind of see how that how that how that's uh, kind of handled itself to see if it kind of has mitigated uh, the issue. As you can see right off the bat, it's mega warped. The sword was warped, so I kind of stuck the sword in in the opposite way so that maybe it'll bend it straight. Anyways, but I'm gonna really jump into Flint here just because he's the character I know very little about. Um, my subscriber told me he was Flint because I really didn't know who he was. I know Duke was the leader of G.I. Joe, and apparently it's this guy in the newer, not new, but in some of the newer things. Um, he is a generic looking guy, and that's not knocking the figure or knocking the designers. I think that's kind of what the leader of G.I. Joe has always looked like. Like Duke, he's never really had like, like, over, like flair, like over flair, right? It wasn't really dramatized to really have that, uh, that like eye catching thing, like, oh, you know, that guy's got pizzazz, if you will. Um, like, you know, Roadblock, uh, Sergeant Slaughter, you know, like they, they are, they're dressed not, well, at least Sergeant Slaughter, 90% of the time he's in a white tank top with his, uh, drill sergeant hat on and, and, that's just the most unconventional fighting uniform, but he still kicks people's asses in it, and I just always thought that was funny. But this guy's dressed like what you would kind of consider a science fiction uh, commando or leader of troops. He's not overly geared. He's not under geared. He's got his massive shotgun um, that looks like it is something out of Gears of War, like a four gauge shotgun. Um, his articulation is what I would call a G.I. Joe standard. He doesn't have anything that sticks out in any type of way. Um, however, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to address it. I've had issues with this in the past and, and on these older figures that someone pointed out, I've noticed it is a, it is a glaring issue. Um, and that would be the legs. Um, as I pointed out, pointed out on one of my last videos about my Crimson Viper, I broke his leg off trying to move it, um, because if you look, it is, it is like, it, it, the joint is frozen inside, and you can't, you pull, you go it any further, you're going to shear it off of there, and he's really not going to be in any crazy poses, he's just going to stand there like so, so real, realistically, that doesn't bother me. Um, and I'm glad that most of the figures that that I would consider to be an action pose guy or, or that I would want to get into a kneeling position, they can at least do it. Um, this guy, he, he, he simply just cannot. And that's fine. I, I, I don't think that it's okay that, that, well, and these older figures, you know, the, the line has progressed. And the line definitely has... Uh, um, the line definitely has, um, changed a lot for the better. I haven't had very many figures now, like, in the modern 
the modern set of figures that have had that issue. Um, so that being said, caution on the older figures and less caution on some of the newer ones. Um, because I've, I, I think the newer ones that I've picked up, I picked up Rock and Roll, I picked up uh, Grunt, uh, Falcon, sorry, uh, Lieutenant Falcon, I think that's his name. I've picked up uh, the Iron or Steel Core characters and their legs work all perfectly fine. I got Helix, her body, besides her, one of her arms is perfectly fine. Her arm is like mega hard to move and it is what it is. Some of these G.I. Joe figures, you're going to really, you're going to have hits and you're going to have misses. This one here is the biggest miss of all time. Like the fact that, that like that's as far as the arms really go and they can't really go inward anymore. You can't bend the arm inward because of the joint. Yeah. So if you've been in the G.I. Joe line, you know what I'm talking about. But this guy uh, just caught my eye. Uh, and I'm going to talk about it real quick. If you made it this far, cool. You're going to learn something kind of neat um, about this character, I guess. Um, so he's got on his beret. Um, depending on when G.I. Joe was, was uh, when this character was introduced, I want to say up until the... the uh, gosh, I actually don't know because I don't really know a whole lot about... Um, the 75th Ranger Regiment, my expertise is in other organizations that I've had the luxury of being uh, acquaintances of, um, which I, I, I know, I, I, I know my brother, um, he knows a lot more than I do, but he's got a black beret. So black berets were actually worn by the 75th Ranger Regiment back in the eight, like pretty much from their adoption of a beret up until about the 90s maybe. I, maybe the, the the late, late 80s. Um, so he's got a black beret, but that's really not the, it's the interesting part, the, the creative liberty into the figure. So he's got the flash, he's got a red flash. That's actually synonymous with um, a few, well, it's not a few, but it's a, you know, the flash of a special operations unit, which again, it's a figure, it's creative liberty, but they even went the extra mile. See that, the design on it? So the crossed arrows and sword, if any of you guys know anything about army or military, you know the crossed arrows and sword is actually the crest uh, of the uh, special oper or special forces. Um, so this normally would pin on a beret right there. So they kind of have the special forces crest on there, but they don't have obviously the, the scroll in the background. Um, but again, it's an action figure, but I just thought it was really interesting. So he's got the the Special Forces uh, signet. <laughs> the uh, He's got it on the beret, which is really cool. Um, I think that's really neat. I'm sure the beret color's wrong, but then again, um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's an action figure. I just think it's really cool. Um, so now that I've talked about that for a while, oh yeah, I was gonna show this too. But anytime you see crossed arrows, um, that's usually a indicator of uh, some ties. I heard something outside. Ties to special forces. And now we're going to jump into him. I'm not going to spend too much time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he's cool. I, I'm not trying to, like, rush through this, but he's, again, standard... G.I. Joe classified articulation. Nothing nothing crazy. He can he can't really grip the sword all that well. Um, but I'm gonna go over all his uh, art, art, his accessories. Excuse me, I'm having a stroke. And he can store pretty much all of them on, on his person. Um, so I'm missing one, let me grab it, because it's actually on a different guy right now. His backpack. <laughs> All right. So what we have, we're gonna start off with his mangled sword. Yeah, see? So it used to be bent this way. Go check out my video. Oh God, I feel a sneeze coming. Oh, please no. All right, good. 
So these came out, one of my previous videos I made was like a minute and 50 second video on how warped this is. This is about the same. I've tried heat treating it. It's just, it just does not work. This was actually bent the complete opposite way. And I'm hoping if I leave it out, it will kind of straighten itself out a little bit um, because it was more or less bent this way. If you want to go check out my other video where I kind of glossed over the fresh out of the package, um, you know, damage that was really done. Uh, it was the worst warping I've ever seen in plastic prepackaging. And it was really unfortunate, but you know, this is his other sword. So it comes with two swords. This one's the cooler one, but it's severely warped. But you can see it's kind of straightening itself out. Not really though. Um, this one here, the one I put in his hand, because I don't want to put it in here because it's just going to warp the shit out of it. And I've tried heat treating this with hot ass water and it just, it, it always goes back. So if you have this figure, let me know if this is something that um, is, is a persistent issue. And then it wouldn't be Snake Eyes if it didn't have his Uzi 9mm. Uh, now, no, of course, it's not a one-to-one, -one, but let's be real. That's an Uzi 9. Nothing, nothing to really say on it. And this is a Beretta uh, M9, like a Rafika, which is like a, a, a three-round burst or full auto. It doesn't have the grip, but normally there's like a sticky grip, kind of an angle grip to, to where you can uh, put your hand on it. It's done in brown paint. You know, I think nothing super crazy. A, a knife, and it wouldn't be a G.I. Joe if he didn't have a knife. Um, yeah, I know I'm not like speed running through all these, but um, they're they're really you know we've seen these accessories a couple of times. Oh, and we have his uh, can or suppressor. Um, this is a unique one. It doesn't really fit. It doesn't peg into the muzzle. It pegs over the muzzle, which is again how it realistically works, but. It means you can't really use this on other figures that don't have very, very narrow muzzles. And this, unlike some of the other ones, is very, very secure. Um, I would prefer that some of these uh, sleeve over the, the actual muzzles than plug in because it's a better connection that way. Um, most most uh, suppressors are thicker. Um, this one is thinner obviously it's it's a nine millimeter so it's 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 thinner um but for a rifle they tend to be a whole lot more a, a little bit bigger uh no not much but just a little bit or at least in in like like just slightly with the dimensions oh i keep dropping shit <laughs> oh good lord this is just a laid back review for me and, and there's, like I showed, taking all the accessories off, there is somewhere to put pretty much all these. And he has a backpack, and that will plug in through these two, like so. But I don't like the way it just hangs off his back. It just, it just hangs off there really far. So I don't even, and if you wanted to, that can stick on there. But... I don't run this with him. I just peg the uh, the sword in like so, put the sword in, and that's what I store it on because I have my custom, one of my custom figures that I'm kind of slowly building him up. Uh, he has the bag. Um, yeah. So that, that's where the bag goes. I don't really have it on, on him. I don't think it looks that great, plus... You know, I think it looks better without it. I know I didn't really cover his articulation. If you're new to my channel, I really don't like go super in depth into articulation. I'll usually say he has standard articulation, which I'll go over it here. It means he can move his feet. He can bend his knees. He can bend, you know, he's got all these standard points, crunch, uh, waist, neck, arms, you know, that's standard articulation. If it has something really unique or that it does something differently or it does very well, I'll usually go into it then. Um, but I don't mean to bore the audience to death over, over certain things like that. 
um, because I'm sure you know what to expect. Um, and I, I do one thing that I do like to cover are the uh, wrists. Do they bend up and down or they go in and out? That's something I do like to cover because I think that's important. Um, so yeah, again, I think this snake eyes and his design is really cool, but uh, I do have to, oh, there it goes. If y'all know my videos, it wouldn't be my video without, towards the very end, my dog going ape shit. Pugs, am I right? Oh, good lord. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it wouldn't be, you know, I, if I had to zonk it, it's with this, this sheath. It is the gummiest, like the worst plastic I've ever seen. It's, it's really bad. But yeah, if you want to check out the, the video where, it, where I show um, just how bad it really was, um, let me know if you want to, you know, let me know if you came from that to here. If you saw that one, let me know. Um, if you know any better heat treating uh, ways to really fix that, let me know. I'm kind of a new guy and uh, I'm kind of a noob. I just like to share my thoughts on action figures and, and things that they do well or things that they do really poorly. And these two that I picked up are, they're mid. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. You'll, you'll learn that I will call it a mid action figure, usually down to articulation. Um, now, coming from how cool it is, they both definitely have a cool factor. Um, but the articulation on both of them is mid. They are both mediocre figures. And I don't mean that in a bad way. They're, like, there's nothing wrong with being a mediocre figure. The word's kind of synonymous with shit. And that's not really my, my idea. Um, how I mean it is it's mediocre. It definitely loses some points for the poor um, warping issues with the weapons. Um, that's something I think that really needs to get get uh, rectified, especially with with swords. Like, you know, the, this is, it doesn't look that bad right here, but I'm sure it'll start bending itself back to where it was. Go check out one of my videos where I show you fresh out of the box how fucked up it really is. And I don't really like to, to drop the F-bomb, but that, that crap was really bad. But thank you, thank you, thank you. If you made it this far, like I said, I do have the Pike Syndicate Soldier uh, review definitely coming out tomorrow. I have to refilm it again. It, it just, it, it, the video didn't quite take. Um, and that sucks, because I really wanted to put it out. Follow me on Instagram. That's kind of where I usually kind of post things that are coming out. Yeah, let, let you know. Follow me there. If you just enjoy posts, um, I post store inventory sometimes when I walk through it. I take some photos, post it, and if you're in the area, say, oh, yeah, look at there. Um, but, yeah, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. If I don't sound super enthused, I'm mega tired. I've had a heck of a weekend. I had to not work, but I've had to uh, study, if you will, on some things. And I'm a little under the weather. I've been sick a couple of times here recently, and I just am tired of it. But anyways, final, for the final goodbyes, thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Check out some of my other stuff. Um, I am always looking to learn um, how to do better videos, so if you have ideas, I, again, I do have a desk coming. It's coming very soon. I have a new filming station coming very soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, shout outs to some of my favorite people out there. Matt Bryant, Skywalker Hendrix, Hybrid Tour Reviews, Out of the Basement, Land Speeder Luke. Those are some of the great guys. Uh, I've been checking out a little bit of Kyle Peterson lately. He's actually got a lot. I watch a lot of his G.I. Joe reviews to kind of catch up on some of those older figures to see if I do or don't want to get something. Um, but anyways... Thank you, have a fantastic day, and stay safe, stay safe, goodbye.